Okay, to start it out, I'll talk about the ships. I'm sure we have people I didn't get to check ahead of time, people from different races. In cloaking, there's numerous different options. There's going to be covert ops cloaking ships, there's going to be recon ships, and there's going to be exploration scanning ships. It's funny that the exploration scanning ships and a lot of times tend to be better for PvP and better suited for exploration, hunting players, all of that. Um, I'll go through and show you the other ones first. Within the frigate section in Covert Ops, there's going to be ones for different races. I'll go into Galente first. We tend to have a lot of Galente pilots in the court. In here, you're going to see the Helios and the Nemesis. Both are Tech 2. You'll notice they have the bonuses, roll bonus, can fit Covert Ops cloaking device. And the reason I bring that up on the Covert Ops is there's going to be a prototype cloaking device an improved cloaking device, a cloaking device, and then a covert ops cloaking device. The covert ops is the only one that allows you to warp around while cloaked. The other ones you just cloak. You can just float in space or sit there and be cloaked. You can't do nothing. You can't go anywhere. You have to uncloak, which then people will see you again and then warp somewhere else. And when you land, cloak back up again. The whole time you're not cloaked, people are going to be able to know where you are generally, you know, in the system, be able to de-scan you down, combat probe you, all that. So when going in wormholes, you always want to do the covert ops cloaking device. Now, if you're an explorer in the beginning and you're just trying to do the hacking in the wormholes, sometimes you can get away with launching your probes, cloaking up, and then opening the scanning screen and you're able to stay cloaked and float in space while you scan down all the sites so you know what to warp to. And then you can uncloak, warp in, hack the things, and then leave the wormhole and get out to safety. So that's the only time I would recommend that. But if you're going to want to hunt people or do any kind of PvP, you want that Covert Ops cloaking device. The Covert Ops one will allow you to warp around. So when you figure out where a player is, you can warp to them and still be cloaked, and they won't know you're there. You can approach to them, whatever you're going to do, you know, to, to start your attack. So in each one of the races, we're going to have two ships there. All of these are going to be Tech 2. They're going to take a while to train into. There's a better option, and this option will allow you to do exploration and PvP. You can either build a ship for one or swap out the modules, do hacking a little bit in high sec, maybe a little hacking in wormholes, swap out the modules and go hunt people and try to PvP. Those are gonna be I forget which section they're in. Let me type them in. So the Astero is gonna be the frigate. Awesome time for my screen to get all buggy. Okay, so the Astero. Let me bring this ship up real quick. These are weird ships. They're Sisters of Eve. If you're not familiar with these, they don't use guns. The top slots are going to be dedicated to, a cloak, dedicated to a cloaking device, to a probe launcher, so you can scan down wormholes and sights and a free slot for something else, I believe. But they don't use any type of weapons or guns. The bonuses here are to drones. You're gonna get hit point resistances, you know, um, armor resistances to your ship, drone hit points, 
you're going to main attack is with this is going to be launching drones and attacking people with drones. It gets a bonus to cloaking devices, scanner probes, uh, hacking devices. Um, this is a big thing here too, is the ships you do this with need to be able to fit a covert ops cloaking device. And this is important too. See how it says cloak reaction delay reduced to 15 seconds. There's a thing with cloaks in the game. And it's almost like a, the cloak is too overpowered, so they had to give some kind of drawback to the cloak. So anybody that uncloaks, there's a delay between when you can target somebody. It's usually 15 seconds, 10 seconds, some timer like that. But this cloak right here, or this ship, gives a bonus that reduces that amount. So by that amount getting brought down, when you want cloak with these ships, you can almost instantly target somebody. You don't have to wait for that delay. If you were to throw a cloaking device on a ship that doesn't have this bonus, you would keep trying to target something and it would keep felling over and over and over until that timer went through. So the Astero is going to be the basic one here. When you look on requirements, okay, another thing I have to mention is the other ones were Tech 2s, which were Omega only. This one is alpha friendly, although the cloak, the covert ops one, is Omega. But these ships are a mix of Galente and Amar, so you have to cross train into both of these races. Not that far, only up to three. It doesn't take that long. Um, you could get into an Astero in a day of training easily. Uh, price wise, I want to say they're around 50, 60 mil. If they look to be about 55 mil today. If you run combat sites in high sec, the drone combat sites have a chance to drop a chip like this. The rogue drone chip. These things right here can drop in the drone sites and you can take these to a Sisters of Eve station and you can trade them directly in for an Estero or a Stratios, the cruiser. You basically give it to them, they give you a blueprint, the blueprint takes almost no materials to make and you instantly have a cloaking ship. And that's from running combat sites. because So you could get in a, a decent-made cruiser, start running combat drone sites until you get one of these to drop, turn it into a ship, and have a cloaking ship rather than go in and buy it. Another option. So besides the Astero, it has a bigger brother called the Stratios. Stratios, the same way, it's going to take Galente and Amar. The other one, you just had to go to Frigate 3. And these ones, you got to go to Cruiser 2. It's going to take a few other skills, a little bit more training. You can get into one of these in a couple days, maybe two, three days of training at most. Again, bonuses to armor resistances, bonuses to drones. The other one had bonuses to drone hit points. This one has hit points and damage. That makes this one a little better for doing PvP, hunting, any kind of combat-related stuff. It also has bonuses to energy turrets. Remember I said the Astero doesn't use any kind of weapons in the upper slots? This one has enough upper slots that you can still fit the probe launcher, the cloak, and enough slots to still have weapons if you want. Some people in PvP, though, they tend to put energy neutralizers and energy nosses they drain the enemy's capacitor down. You can pretty much shut off an enemy's tank. You can shut off their micro warp drive or afterburner by draining their capacitor, which allow you to stop them dead in their tracks. Shutting off their tank, they can no longer shield repair or armor repair, which means you can damage them quicker, faster. They won't be able to repair it. You'll be able to kill them quicker. Um, it has the same things, bonuses to scanning probes, to data analyzers and relic analyzers for hacking. That bonus is important if you do want to do any kind of hacking yourself. And it has the covert ops cloaking device bonus and the cloak reactivation delay. This right here is what I recommend you do this kind of hunting in. But to start with, you want to start with an Astero to get to learn it. If you're just going to do the hacking part of it, you want to use the Tech 1 frigates. The ones without cloaks, like the Heron, those ones, the Magnate, I believe it is. 
that will keep it cheap. So if a player that is hunting, like what I'm doing here, is looking for you, they you'll end up only losing a cheap ship and not something expensive. This one's a little more pricey, at 220 mil. A Stero gets you in the door at 50 mil. This one, once you fit one of these up with modules, all the drones, you're looking at 300, 350 mil. It's not cheap. It's not something you want to lose. Um, definitely learn in the Astero first. And it's kind of like, um, like cats. When cats hunt in the wild, you're always going to hunt a prey smaller than yourself or your same size. So when you're in the frigate, the Astero, you're only going to really be able to kill frigates and smaller. There's nothing smaller than a frigate, so that's pretty much it. Um, in the cruiser, you can take on other cruisers and frigates. There is a little bit of leeway there. Some battleships, you could solo a battleship in a Stratios. There's a lot of cases where it's been done, um, whether they have a junk fit or whether yours is really nicely fit, whether they're in a combat site and fighting sleepers. And you know, okay, he's taking damage from eight NPCs right now. If I warp in there right now and start putting damage on him at the same time, I'm pretty sure I can kill him and warp out. Those kind of situations, you could take something bigger than, than what you are. But in most cases, you always want to hunt same size and smaller. There's one other option for ships that I'm not going to go into showing you guys. Like right now, they're, it takes a long time to train into them. And they're... They kind of have a really bad drawback. The Tech 3 um, strategic cruisers. If you get blown up in one of these, you lose a skill level in your highest trained skill for the subsystems for that ship. Let me show you. So in my ships here, I have a couple of them here. So this one right here is the Legion. It's the MR. You see the orange Tech 3 in the corner. It's the one I use the most. The Proteus. This one here is the Galente, also Tech 3, strategic cruiser. And these are the Kaldari. These are the Tengus. The cool thing about these ships is you get to pick the subsystems. And the subsystems determine how many slots are on the ship, where the slots are, what kind of bonuses it gets, to what kind of modules. You pretty much design the ship. And what you see here in the picture isn't always what the ship looks like. Depending on the subsystems you put on the ship, it actually physically changes the way the ship looks. So a lot of people's, you know, Tengu or Proteus looks different from the next guy's Tengu and Proteus when you look at it because they've made their ship differently. Now I'll get in one and show you. Now see how it says activate modular ship. If your modular ship is destroyed, then you will lose skill points in one of the skills associated with the ship's subsystems. Are you sure you want to continue? It's warning me right now. It's saying if you die in this ship, you're going to lose days of training and skill points. And that's kind of a drawback for these ships because they're extremely overpowered. Now, on these Tech 3 ships, you'll see a lot more module slots. You have all your high slots up here, like what we normally have. You have all your mid slots. You have all your low slots. You have your rigs. And then you have these other ones here. These are the subsystems. These are also the ones you're going to lose skill points in if you get blown up. Now, these are what you pick that design the way the ship looks and what kind of bonuses and how the slots are. Depending on what these could have picked, I could have had... <coughs> Sorry, cough. So depending on which ones I picked, I could have had two more low slots or one more mid slot or I don't think I can get more high slots. I don't see how they could fit them up here. I think I have the max for that. But depending on how you do it, you, you could have had a different slot layout. My ship looks different than the picture. Let me show you the picture. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah, go ahead. 
Um, those um, subsystem slots, if you remove them, do they get destroyed like a rig slot? No. I'll explain that right now after I, I point this out. Good point. Okay. So notice the picture here. The ship has two points in the front of it. It looks completely different than mine. You would wonder, you're like, hey, that's not the same ship. So depending on the subsystems designs the way your ship looks, besides the way the slot layout is and besides the bonuses it gets. When you go over and just look at the bonuses, it just says generic ones right here. But when we go and look at the modules, it'll tell you exactly what bonuses I have. So for example, this subsystem, 10% to afterburner, 10% to micro warp drive. This gave me plus one mid slot and plus one low slot. So depending on which one of the ones I chose for this slot in the ship, I could have got different stats and different bonuses. There's gonna be one that's gonna handle your propulsion. That's this one. One that handles your weapons. So this one gives me a bonus to missiles. It gives me a bonus to drones and it gives me plus seven high slots. Um, more power grid, more CPU, more drone bandwidth, and a larger drone bay. It pretty much turned me into a missile drone boat by me choosing this one. But that's pretty much how it is. You can design by choosing these subsystems. Now, she brought up is you actually have a subsystem bay. You have a special cargo hold that allows you to carry extra subsystems. You'll see here, subsystem bay. So with the subsystem bay, you can actually carry them and you can change them out and you can actually reconfigure your ship, change everything about your ship on the fly. Just stock at a station or use a mobile depot in space and change how your ship is. Now, all of these can come out of the ship. You can take them out, you can put them back in, you can swap them out. It'll let you do that freely. There is no cost. Now, another cool thing is because you can switch these, these are the only ships that you are allowed to remove your rigs from. Other ships, rigs are destroyed. If you try to repackage the ship or remove the rig, it's destroyed. In these, you can remove the rigs. You can take them out and put them back in. No problems whatsoever. Completely reusable. So the whole ship is um, interchangeable depending on what you want to do in the game. Now it's a cruiser, but it can do things that battle cruisers and battleships can do. That's how good those are. For the example today, I'm just going to fly that. It's got everything I need on it. It's got my probe launcher. Let me go back in there and show you. So I need my covert ops cloaking device. That's going to allow me to cloak and move around freely while cloaked. Then I need my expanded probe launcher. I bring in expanded because it allows me to use regular core scanner probes that allow you to scan down sites and wormholes, you know, hacking sites, uh, gas sites, or data, anything like that. But then I also carry combat probes. These ones here allow me to scan down players. They allow you to scan down wrecks. They allow you to scan down drones, mobile tractor units, player-owned stations. They, they allow you to find everything other than sites in the game. You can find a player in space with, with one of these. They could be hiding way out in the middle of nowhere, and you can scan them down and warp directly to them. Let me do something. I realize I need to switch my clones. If you notice here, one of my neutralizers, when I got in the ship, it got turned off. I use a clone that gives me more power grid, more CPU, all that stuff. It allows me to squeeze bigger, better, and more modules onto my ships. This would be a good little experience on if you don't know much about clones. So if you open your character screen and go to the character tab right here, you're going to have jump clones. 
you can make jump clones. And as you see, each one of these are in different stations. You can take these jump clones and you can place them in different places, far away or even the same system, one in null sec, one in high sec, one in a wormhole, one in high sec, whatever you want, 50 jumps apart. And you can instantly jump to another one of your clones once per day. It's almost like an instant teleportation. It can get you across the galaxy. But you're stuck in that clone for 24 hours. When you add implants to your clone, which give it better stats or increase your training times to make your skills train faster, those are attached to your clone. And when you get jump or when you jump, they get left behind. There's a good thing about this, though, is you can actually have, see, right now I'm in a naked clone, you would call it. I've got no implants, which means it's good for PvP. If I die, my clone gets blown up. I'm not going to lose, you know, money worth of implants. But in this case, like, I PvP all the time. I use an expensive clone with lots of implants in it. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to one of these. I'll take this one. If you have clones and you're not waiting that 24 hour period, your jump button won't be grayed out and you'll be able to jump to that clone. It tells me, do you want to do this? Yes. Oh, I have a clone thing here. So let me see. That one is at Moon One Ard Shaper. Right click, set destination. Undock. Luckily, I keep a couple in the same system, so I can easily switch to a naked clone to um, any of my other clones in equipment. Uh, we see Deuce Zeus out here in his Brutix. Okay, so I'm warping over to that one. So right now, I'm going to get out of my naked one. I'm going to get into my better one. I've got implants in here that give me better stats, but they also give me more power grid more capacitor, more CPU. Some um, give me faster launching with my missiles, uh, different stuff like that. You can find all kinds of implants if you didn't know about these on the market. They could range anywhere from a couple thousand up to millions, depending on how good of implants you want. The downside to them is if your clone, your pod, does get blown up, you will lose these implants. They will get blown up. Some of these aren't cheap. This pod right here is probably about a 1 billion isk pod. And it's mainly because of these. These are really rare implants, the ones that I do have installed on them. So once in this, this will allow me to fit or actually turn my energy neutralizer on on that ship I was just in. So there we go. It instantly jumped me over. Now you see I have a naked clone right here at this station. And all my jump buttons are grayed out. I can't jump until that time period goes by. But I go over to my augmentations. Shows all my implants are installed. Okay, I'm undocking, head back over there, grab the ship, I'm going to undock, and we will scan a site down. We'll find our wormhole. Any questions so far? Uh, yes, I'd like to ask a question. So, you say the cloaking devices are highly recommended for the PvP, but not really for scanning down the anomalies. I mean, the hacking and other stuff. Yes, there's a lot of people that go into wormholes in the really, really cheap Tech 1 ships, and they will hack the data sites in there and play the minigame, loot the, you know, the stuff once they win the minigame, and then come out of the wormholes. It's recommended, though, you learn how to do that in high sec first, because you can find those same kind of sites, although there'll be less value of items in them, but it'll be a good learning tool. You won't have to worry about players jumping you and trying to kill you while you learn in high sec. And once you feel you've got the mini game down, like, you know, I'm really good at this. I can I can get through the mini game in less than a minute. I'm going to try wormholes now. And that's when an explorer would go into wormholes. The cloak helps because you could be cloaked while you're scanning the sites down, but you don't necessarily need it. When you're going to do the PvP part of it, though, 
the idea is you want to be sneaky, sly. You don't want them to know you're there until the moment you're uncloaking and targeting them. It's a huge surprise. Like, oh my God, where'd this guy come from? By that time, you're already shooting missiles or your guns at them, launching drones and killing them. Okay, so I'm back here. I will jump in that ship. You know, keep in mind, while I'm using this Tech 3, you could also use like one of these Asteros over here. You could also use a Stratios. You could also use one of the race-specific ones that I showed you earlier, the ones for each of the races. Although those are Tech 2 and they take a little longer to train into, you can get into an Astero, like I said, in a day. 50 million in a day of training, you could be flying one of these. As long as you're Omega, it takes a little bit more, maybe a day or two training, but you could get into the Covert Ops cloaking device and be able to use that on it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and undock here. We're not going to look in Nalu for a wormhole because being a dead-end system, and this is one of the reasons we like Nalu, is we don't get a lot of traffic here. There's not a lot of people here except for us and the people that other, you know, other people that live here. We want to go in a main trade path. We want to be where people are going in and out the system, where explorers are going to be, where miners are going to be, where people that want to run combat sites are going to be, not tucked away in a corner. Okay, so I'm going to jump into Luramu. Okay, so about cloaks. This is what it's going to look like on your overview right here. See, since I'm in a covert ops one, I can cloak right now. Watch. Now nobody can de-scan me down, and they can't see me until I uncloak. Or I get within 2,000 meters of something. That will auto decloak me. Watch as I approach the gate. I just passed 2,000 meters. It's decloaking me. But it's okay. I'm jumping through. If somebody was gate camping me, they would have not had any time to target me or even scan my ship to know what cargo I have. Now I'm on the other side. I'm staying cloaked for the moment. Usually you want to assess your surroundings. Check local. I see these Laura people, these are miners. They're always over here. These other people, EP, he's always here. Thelsia, oh, they're gone. Now, I know it's all miners here. It's kind of a dead system. I probably want to keep going and find a wormhole in a more active system. So what I'm going to do is, in my assets window, I keep items at the main trade hubs. And that gives me a quick bookmark so I can quickly get to one of the trade hubs. So I open my assets window, and if I look, I have Amar on there. Emperor Academy. Right-click and set destination. As you can see, all green, blue, no reds, no orange. Don't have to worry about any... PVP area is on the way. I know because I'm going to Amar, this is the same path that other players are going to take. Even explorers, even miners, they're going to think, oh, I can pop in a wormhole on my way to Amar, get some stuff worth money, pop back out, and continue on my way to Amar and sell it. So getting on that same path as them increases our chances of running into people that are doing what we want them to be doing which is essentially going into wormholes. Jumping to Jarshitsen. We got Jacqueline hanging out over here. Again, I'm right now, because I'm within 2,000 meters, I can't cloak. But as soon as I'm not, I can cloak. One thing I'm going to point out, too, is right now on local, you notice how you could see everybody's name in there? You know how many people are in the system. You know who's in the system with you. You know if there's good guys, bad guys. You know their names. You can click on them. You can go on 
the internet and look them up and see if they're a killer, a minor, what they do. When you're in a wormhole, there's going to be nobody in here. It's going to be completely empty. But there could be a hundred people in the wormhole. You just don't know. Nobody shows up in local right here unless they speak in local, which that is the next thing I'm getting into is never speak in a wormhole. It lets people know who you are, that you're there. It gives them the intel they need to look you up and find out who you are and find out more about you. Um, so never talk in local. Even if somebody tries to talk to you, never talk in local. Pretend like you didn't hear it or you're not there. Okay, a little bit more people in this system, random people. I'm going to double click in space so I move away from the gate. Right now I'm moving. I have my probes. Oh, first I should check and see if there's sites here. Pressing the scanning button and then pressing the one to the left will bring up the scanner menu. In here we'll see different sites. Green ones are 99% combat sites. The 1% is going to be when you find an ice site, which is ice mining. A cosmic signature right here, this could be one of three things. It could be a combat site, which we don't want. It could be a wormhole, which we do want. Or it could be a hacking site, which we don't want. So we're going to go ahead and scan this one down. I'm going to launch my probes. You need to have at least eight probes. It's automatically going to launch them in a pinpoint pattern. If it doesn't, click this button down here to the left, in the very left corner of the scanner window. You want to launch in pinpoint. That will get you the best results. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Now, if you hold the alternate key down and roll the mouse wheel outward, it will expand and retract the probes. I want to make sure my probes are a little bigger than the outer red circle of what I'm searching. Left click, drag, and drop it over the top. Now you want to left click the screen and move to a side view. Right now, I'm perfectly lined up on the side view. I want to hit the Analyze button. And right now, just for whatever reason, I'm going to cloak up just so nobody knows what I'm in and can't see. When you see it flashing green here, you know you're cloaked. Cloak won't run out. It doesn't use capacitor. You won't get decloaked unless you get unless you get within 2,000 meters of something, or press that button. OK, so I scanned that down. It moved slightly. It showed up as 12.2%. I'm going to scroll back to the top view. Line it up on top view. Go to a side view. We're still lined up, so I'm going to hold alternate and roll the mouse wheel down. I'm going to make them one size smaller. Hit the Analyze button and scan. Okay, 60%. Since we're more than, I believe, 50%, it'll start telling you what it is or somewhere close to there. We know it's a wormhole. So I'm going to keep scanning it down. So remember, top view, line it up. Side view, line it up. Hold alternate, mouse wheel down, shrink the bubbles, then analyze. Simple process. It'll seem complicated or hard at first, then it gets easier as you go along. There we go, it's at 100%. So at this point, it's popped up the warp to. You can only warp to something when it's at 
I don't want to forget my probe, so I'm going to recall them. And when you warp to things in the cloaked mm -hmm. ship, you never want to warp to zero. You want to always warp to 20, mm -hmm. something higher. When you're inside wormholes and you're warping the sites, you want to warp to 100k to make sure there's no enemies in the mm -hmm. site. You don't want to land, get decloaked, get attacked, and get killed. So right here in this situation, mm -hmm. I want to check out the wormhole, but I don't. if somebody's watching the wormhole, like cloaked, I don't want them to know I'm there. I don't want to get decloaked. So I want to stay cloaked, so I'm going to warp about 20k off from it. If I right-click it here within the menu, and I choose warp to 20. Now, rather than close this, I'm just going to minimize this. Okay, so we always want to keep watching local. We got people coming in and out of the system. That means we're in a good system. It's got traffic. So here I am. I'm landing at the wormhole. I came close. Even though I chose 20, it still landed me 7K off. Not 2K, so I'm not going to get decloaked. I'm still cloaked. Now, when you do this, you want to look at the wormhole. You want to right-click and do... look. Um, show info so this one actually is not the kind of worm this is not the castle we're looking for this wormhole leads to high security space so going through this wormhole will actually just jump us to another high sec system i can do it real quick and show you guys so you can see an example but while i'm here i'll show you this so the next line is super important this wormhole is beginning to decay and probably won't last another day. That line, the third line down, is the one you want to pay attention to. If it says that, if you read that and it says that it's about, the wormhole's about to close, you don't want to go in that one. I'll point it out when we see it. So right now I'm going to go ahead and jump through the wormhole. Now, I don't have to worry about this. This one goes high sec to high sec, so I don't have to worry about a PvP area. I'll be safe jumping through this. And that landed us in Kaldari space. Look how far we are away from Amara now. There's even a low sex system in between us. But we're in a completely different system far away. A couple sites here as well. I'm not going to go to this one because it's going to be so far away. We'll enter back through the wormhole. But I just wanted to show you the basics of this is called a high sec to high sec or a high to high. And basically, there's no actual wormhole that you go into. The wormhole itself will just jump you like a jump gate, like a stargate to another system. And there we go, back through the wormhole. Okay, since we know that this one's no good, we're going to jump to the next system. Cloak up, just so nobody sees me or knows what I'm flying. If you guys aren't familiar with it yet, a good point for me to bring up now is D-Scan, directional scan. That scanner window, we click the button down here, 
we click to the left to open the scanning window. When you click it and click the one to the right, it'll open the directional scanner. Now mine's a small window. If yours comes up with a map, you can click these little buttons up here and you can break it off away from the big map and close the big map. When you hit the scan button on this, this will give you a list of stuff that's around you in space. Stuff that you might not be able to see on your directional scanner, but that's out there anyway. Right now it just shows me the only thing near me is a stargate. But when you're in a wormhole, this is important because it'll allow you to see people, see combat probes. If they're pe like if somebody's looking for you, it'll let you to see scanner probes. It'll let you know if an explorer is in the wormhole looking for something. So you'll want to have this open. The other way to open it, rather than clicking those two buttons, is pressing alternate and D. D for David. As you see, I can open and close mine by holding and pressing alternate D. That, while PVPing, is super important. You want to always have it up. Where you put it on your screen, how big you have it, is up to you. But for the most majority of times, you want to have range and angle set to max. The times you'll change that is when you decide to start looking specifically at certain planets to see if you can scan down a player at a certain planet or something. Okay, so let's see if there's sites in the system. I'm going to get moving, double click away from the gate in space. Oh, look, five sites here. This will be perfect for us. I know we'll find a good wormhole here. So I'm going to launch probes and then cloak up. Now you can't do anything while you're cloaked, but you can launch probes and then cloak, and then while you're cloaked, you can scan, which keeps you perfectly safe while inside wormholes while you're scanning. They can't find you. But you want to be moving, like away from stuff. Some people will try to uncloak you by heading in the direction that you were, and try to get within that 2,000 meters and make you uncloak so they can attack you. Okay, so let's scan some of these down. I'm going to do what I call like a quick scan. I don't open it up fully and I don't click on any of the sites or pick one. I leave it small and I try to see if I can hit a high percentage on one of these. So I'll leave it like that and just drop it around them all. hit analyze, and then whatever I get the highest percentage with that pops up, like my closest result, I'm going to go with that. It'll get me there quicker. Okay, we get 19% on one. Click on it. Center it on the top. Left click, move the screen. I gotta grab the arrows and move it down and center it. Now I'm gonna hold alternate, move the mouse wheel in one step. Hit the analyze button. Just to get ready, I'm gonna center on top for the next scan phase. And there we go, we picked a good one, 56%. Wormhole. Once it tells you what the site is and it's a high percentage and it turns orange, sometimes you can get by by going more than one shrinking of the bubbles inward. Right now I did two, aiming to get that 100% in this one scan. And we got it. Pull the probes in. Right now I'm going to do something before I warp to it. I'm going to uncloak and I'm going to reload my probes into my launcher. Then I cloak back up. I'm going to right click on it. I'm not going to use the warp to button. I'm going to warp to 20 again. 
And we do this because if somebody is in the wormhole camping it, trying to kill people that come in, they could have somebody on the outside cloaked watching it. I I do this myself. I have an all I set people up as cloaky, we call them eyes. And you have eyes on the wormhole. So you could be in the wormhole doing whatever and you still can watch the wormhole and know if somebody's coming in and out. You can know their name and what kind of ship they're flying. So you know what you're up against before you even have to deal with them. So here I am. I'm landing at the wormhole. It should show up on the overview any second. I'm going to right-click the wormhole and show info. Okay, this is perfect. So it says, this wormhole seems to lead into unknown parts of space. If it says it leads into dangerous unknown, that's a high-level wormhole. You probably won't find the kind of sites you want to camp in a dangerous unknown. Unknown's perfect. The next line below that, this wormhole is beginning to decay and probably won't last another day. That's perfectly fine. If it says, I forget the exact message, but um, the message that sounds more drastic than that means it's going to close in a couple hours. Um, I think it says this wormhole is reaching the end of its lifetime. If it says it's reaching the end of its lifetime, don't go in that wormhole. You could go in and it could close five minutes after you go in and you'll be stuck in there. And when you find a new way out, you could be 50 jumps away from where you started. So we're good with this one. So let me go under the bookmarking part. We know the wormhole is not going to close. We know it's a lower level wormhole. So bookmarks, you can go to people and places. It's this magnifying glass or you can press alternate E. Now this is where you have all your contacts, your agents, you can search stuff up. What's important here is locations. Now you wanna be on locations and you have this add location button. This right here is how you're gonna save bookmarks in certain places in the wormhole and also by right-clicking and stuff on the overview. So just to show you an example before we go in, we're going to want to right-click on wormhole on the overview and hit Save Location. I have a certain naming convention I always use with these, so I call this Entrance or ENT. And it saves it up here. Green lets me know that the bookmark is in the same area as me, the same system. If it turns white, it's not in the same system as me. But let's say I go in the wormhole, but somebody else in the corp wants to join me later. I can share this link with them right here and, you know, through the shared locations, and they can come and join me in the wormhole. It would save them from having to scan it down. So right now I'm clicking Enter Wormhole. I'm cloaked right now. Nobody knows I'm here. I'm approaching it. The moment I enter it, though, I'll flash on somebody's screen if they're sitting here and watching it. But they won't have a, you know enough time to really know what I'm in, what I'm flying, and be able to notify their bodies if somebody's in there. That's a worst-case scenario. So the bookmarks needs to always be up because when we get on the inside, we're going to bookmark the exit. You're going to find out that, you know how here in HiSec we have gates, and you can just right-click and warp to a gate? In a wormhole, nothing's shown on the overview. You're going to have to have bookmarks, and the bookmarks are going to be how you move around and go places. Okay, I'm almost to it. And I jumped in. Welcome to wormholes. Now we're going to get a random number up in the corner, and that represents the wormhole we're in. There's lots of them. On the D scan right now, I can see that there is a container. There are player-owned stations and a sun. On the overview, it's just me and the wormhole and the sun. Nothing else. So let me look up this wormhole to make sure nobody's been killing in here within the last hour.
nope, nobody's killed in here since yesterday. So basically what I did was I went on the Z kill player kill boards and I typed the name of this wormhole in on the search box and it gave me a list of the last time people were killed or killed somebody in this wormhole. So now I know we're fine. Okay, my cloaky timer is about to wear off. You're going to want to look at the wormhole and then double click away in space. Then you're going to want to launch probes and then cloak. That right there means we're going away from the wormhole, the only thing we're close to. So we're not going to get decloaked. We launched our probes because we can't once we cloak. And then we cloaked so now we can't be seen. We double clicked so we're moving so people can't come and try to bump into us and try to uncloak us. So now we have our probes out. If we hit the scan button, you'll see now our scan probes are on the scanner. Other players can see this too. So if somebody's in the wormhole, they might not be able to see me, but they know that my that I'm here, that somebody's here. Now on local, look at local, completely empty. Now we know I'm here, at least I should be on this list. But like I said, wormholes have no local it's not connected to the game's network, like the communication system, like the systems. So nobody will show here unless they talk. So there could be just me in this wormhole, or there could be 100 people, or five guys. We never know until they show themselves. So now I'm going to go into the scanning itself. Oh, wait, I missed a step. Can't forget this part. The wormhole. You're going to want to click on it. You're going to want to right-click and save location. I name this exit. As you see, the entrance is now white. Like we said, we're no longer in that system. The exit is green. We are in that system. That's going to be our way out. That's what you need to click. You need to right click and hit warp two in an emergency or if you need to leave. Okay, now to the scanning. Oh, we have a ton of sites here. I'm going to see if I can't just get some with a couple high percentages. Okay, we got a couple so far. We got gas, data, gas, relic, data. Now we want to find stuff that's level three and below. So right here we got a level one data site. I went double strengths because it's orange. It's already 57. I think I can pinpoint it with this one search. Sometimes you might not be able to, and you'll have to back your bubble up one size and search again. Quick question. Yeah. How, yeah. how do you tell what's a level on those? When I hovered over it, see how I have it right now? There's a pop-up box, and it says data site, and to the right of that, it says level one. So once you scan it down, you'll know. Okay, so we got that data site at 100%. So we know because it's still level one, there's no enemies in this. But the same thing I told you before, you always want to warp to 100. And that's going to help us place what we call a perch. And a perch is where we can sit to watch the site that gives us the perfect strategic point to warp in on a player if they come into the site. So right now I'm going to warp to 100 to that data site. I right click on it like all the other ones, warp to within, and choose within 100. It's going to give me a pop up. Go ahead and close it. Now, if you find a data site and it says it's level three and it says it is, what is the word? Um, I think it's like uncontrolled or something like that. It's something with the word un. We'll probably run into the, to one here. But those ones always have enemies in it. We'll find one probably in here. Okay, so I warped to 100 from the site. 
Now in the overview, we can see all the, the hacking modules. I'm going to hit DSCAN. Nothing else is here, just me and my probe still. So I want to spin the camera and look at the site. I can see it right there, up above my ship slightly. Now what you want to do is you want to get over 150 kilometers from this. So I'm going to spin my camera. And I'm going to double click in space. Now my ship's going to start floating away and we're going to see the kilometers on all of these hacking modules get over 150k. And the reason for that is once you're over 150k from something, you can warp directly to it. You right click and do warp to. And it's like a gate, except it's a really, really short warp. And the reason for this is when a player comes in the site, we can look and see which container they're hacking. And we can click on the container and we can warp directly to the container landing right on top of that player, being right in range to be able to attack them. OK, so now that the ship's moving away from the site, we're preparing this site, preparing to make our bookmark here. So I'm going to open the scanning window again. And keep in mind, we're recording this. And we're going to have this video saved so you guys can come back and watch this, pause it, go back through, and maybe go through these steps while you're actually in a wormhole and follow along at a later date if you need. OK, so we got that one scanned. I'm going to enlarge my probes by two steps. This is going to allow me to catch some of those other sites at a higher percentage. We're going to go with the next good-looking site on here. OK, we have a data level 2. I center on the top, I center on the side. We're already orange, but we're 25%. I'm only going to shrink once on this one. It could move slightly. And it did move slightly, but we're at 75. Center top. Move the screen to the side. Center side, shrink the bubble. Scan again. This should nail us 100% on that one. Yep. Now we're still setting up our bookmark for this one. So I don't want to warp to that one yet. So I need to remember MPY, I need to come back to that one. I need to set up my bookmark there. So I'm going to go on to scanning. I know that one step back, we almost had a relic site right here. So I'm going to make the bubbles one size larger again. Ah, and it didn't find it, funny. OK, one more again. OK, so we got this relic site, 63%. It's a level 1. We also have another data site down there. We'll go for the relic right now. It's almost scanned down. Center on the top. Center on the side, shrink by one size. Actually, we're 63%. We'll shrink by two. Nothing's on D scan still, just us and our probes. Okay, we got that relic to 100% too. So MPY and NWC, we still need to make bookmarks for those. Enlarge my probes, find the next site. So right now, we already know we have three good spots that we can camp. 
And right here, gas sites, data sites. Okay, we're going to go for this data site. Okay, we got it centered top, centered side, shrunk one size, scanning again. And we got that one scanned down. Okay, so we have all of those ones we got to do. So pretty much every site we've scanned except CRE. I'm not even going to scan the rest of them because that's more than enough for an example. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my probes back in. See, remember how I said while you're cloaked you can't do anything? You can't launch your probes while you're cloaked, but you can pull them back in while you're cloaked. But you can't reload them. That's what's good about the sister's core or the sister's expanded probe launcher is you can fit a lot of sets of eight in there, which means you don't always need to reload. You can wait and reload later. I have like four or five sets in there at once. Okay, so we have both all these sides scanned down. Okay, and I am not seeing a player yet. So we'll see what happens here. Jacqueline. Jacqueline, are you there? get a pop from one screen to the other to get to oh take turn my mic back on what's up do you have your hacking ship um not um look not on i mean i'm not okay. in it okay i'm at the i'm at the hangar okay if you want to jump in your hacking ship and go to mateus you can come in this wormhole and hack some of these sites if you'd like. Oh, God, you're scaring the heck out of me. All right. Okay, so I'm going to set the... You're talking about the Astero, or you're talking about the um, uh, the Sunesis? Sinesis. Not the Sinesis. You need something with a hacking bonus, remember? So do you still have that Tech 1 ship that has hacking bonuses or no? I've got the um, Astero that you gave me. No, the Tech 1, the one like a Galente, a Mar, Caldari, one of the Tech 1 ships. Uh, is, hang on a second. Let me look. The Emucus? If you have it still, yes. Okay, let me see. Let me take a quick look at the... Um, what I got for fittings in there? Yeah, it's set up. It's set up with what you had me put in it. Let me check and see. Do I need my probes? Let me check if I got probes in it. I got to put probes in it. Hang on. Core probes. Just in case. All right. And Doc, you're going to have to guide me on how to find you. Okay. So before I came in here, so I'm going to look on local. The last system before I went into a wormhole was Mateus. So in corp chat, I'll type the name of that system and get you a link. All right. Corp chat. I am nervous. You know that. Okay. So there in corp, I gave you the system. So set destination to there. Done. Now I'm going to give you guys a little lesson on how to do shared locations. So in shared locations up here, we have the bookmark I made in my personal. Now in shared, I'm going to drag that down into it. 
This is my first wormhole. Okay, so I dragged that in there, so go ahead and head over. Okay, so if you guys notice, I'm over 150 kilometers. Right now I can hit stop ship. And then I'm going to go up to my add location. And on add location, I'm going to name this. I have a way I do it where I call them perches and I give them numbers. So I always put a dash so I can find it easy. And this is going to be my perch number one. And I hit submit. So now I have a marked spot right here that will warp me exactly, you know, to this spot far enough away that I could warp to anybody in here. Okay, now that I have that one done, I'm going to warp to the next. Mateus. What? See that events folder I clicked? I mean, I added. Yep. Uh, click that. Okay. Does it give you an option to online folder? Online location or, yeah, online. It's already highlighted. Click connect. Yes. Okay. I'm decloaking. So what am I doing? Am I online with you or what? No. So I added you. You added the, the ability to do those bookmarks. So I'm going to send you an invite right now. Okay. Don't lose me in there. I'm going to show you exactly what to do. Okay. Okay. So I invited you to fleet. Now we're both in fleet together. So you know how to work to me if you ever need. If I need or can I do that now? Are you in the wormhole? No, I got to get to okay. the wormhole. Yeah. yeah. All right. That worked to me until you're in a, in the wormhole with me. But, okay. So another thing too is, when you work to somebody cloaked, you want to be cloaked because if you're not cloaked, you'll uncloak them. So, I don't have a cloaking thing on this. Okay, then that's fine. Then you won't want to work directly to me, or if you yeah. do, I'll have you um, like I'll move away. It'll be fine. I was just okay. explaining that so everybody knows being a cloaking class. So Okay. Okay, so you know how to open your people in places, right? Yep. You're going to open people in places, alternate E, and you're going to go to locations. Okay, I don't do keyboard stuff, so I'm in um, people in places. I'm in my, um, my locations. Okay, so... Click and open shared locations. Yep. Okay. And warp in point and, and um, entrance. Okay. So is entrance green for you? Yes. Go ahead and warp to that. That's the wormhole. Okay. And warp to within or to a point. You can go ahead and warp to zero and go ahead and jump into it. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, so I have that point made for this one. So let me go to the scanner. That was site CR3. So next down the list would be MPY. I'm going to go ahead and work to 100K from that. Oh, creepy. Where is it? So when you jump in the wormhole, stay cloaked and don't move. Okay. Let me know when you're in the wormhole. Enter wormhole. Okay. You go through, you may be, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I will. Okay. Okay. I landed at this next data site. I'm looking at it. I'm going to flip 180 with the camera and double click in space to move away. Oh. Okay. Warp to you? No, do not warp to me. I said hold cloak. You're inside the wormhole now? Yep. Okay, let me add a temporary bookmark for this spot so I can come back to it. Okay, so I see the star and I see the wormhole, which is cool. I'm still cloaked. If I do the scan thing um, on you the don't side... Wanna, you don't wanna, yeah, you don't want to scan right now. I already did all the scanning for us. Um, but if I pop up the one on the on the uh, we got we got limited right cloak. side you got, a, you got a timer going right now we got limited yeah I cloak. do so let's let's save that for a moment okay. my timer is five four three yeah two. we needed that time to explain stuff okay um so I'm gonna work to something that I need you to work to me okay because I'm I'm on cloaking right now you have a data or a data and a relic analyzer i have both hurry up i'm on phone yeah you're at the wormhole though you can exit if like worst case scenario but um i'm warping into a site right now okay i can see you on d scan do you have d scan up D scan. What's D scan? Press hold alternate and press the D key. Alt D. Oh, okay. A little window that's got that you can scan for ships. Okay, so go ahead and work to me now. I I'm gonna start. I I'm gonna start moving so you don't decloak to me. Okay, you want me to go to, to zero? Warp to me. Yeah, warp to me to zero. Okay. Yeah. I'm moving so you won't decloak me. When you land, I'll already be away from you. All right. Yeah, because I have the I have the scan up, but I don't have D scan. I don't know what D scan is. I have a okay. oh, directional scanner. Is that what you're yes. referring to? Yeah. Okay, because I don't see you in there. Because I'm cloaked. Yeah. So All right. if you guys notice, we saw Jackie land on the overview. Now, if I was 150K away, I would be able to warp in on her like she was an enemy. So right now, like if I left click on Jackie and I click the little eye up here, the look at button, I can point and look the way Jackie's going. Are you heading to one of the containers, Jackie? Yeah, you want me to? Yeah, you're, you're supposed to be going to hack them. Oh, I am. Okay, I'll go look at I'll go hack them. Oh, I don't have a... Um, it's going to take me a while to get there. I don't have an afterburner to get me quicker. No worries. They're it all... Gives me time to explain this. So, Good. see right now, we can see Jackie. We press the eye on her, and we're watching Jackie's ship. Look at me. Look so at right, you guys. So right now, oh, I can't. Hey, Jackie, one second, please. Yeah. So right now, we, we're cloaked. Nobody knows we're here. We're watching. We can see where she's going and what she's doing, what ship she's in. 
We even know her name. If we were to go on Z Kill into the kill boards, we could type her name in and we could see other Imikisses she's lost and know exactly what kind of ship she's flying. Or we could see if she gets lots of kills and this might be a trap. But right now she's heading for a container and we can actually, as she gets closer, we'll be able to see the exact container she's heading for. It's like I normally do. It looks like I use it. Yeah, I get there about a thousand meters away from my item. Yeah, but the warp in point was different because of me. I had to give you something other, you know. But um, so right right now she's warping to serp or she's heading to Serpentis ruins. This one's straight ahead of her. So even though we're looking through her eyes and we're looking where she's going, we can actually click on this ruins and it highlights it in the overview. So we know which one she's going to. It's this one here at 35. Are you in a data or a relic? I don't remember. This is a relic. The relic. Okay. Yep. So right now we're targeted on that container. When we right click her, we don't get a warp to option. But when we right click the container, we do get a warp to option. I won't right now because I'm not over 150k away. You want me to hack it? Yeah. I, I hit the, all right. I like the, okay. You want to explain what I'm doing? You want me to do it? Oh, no, that's fine. It's not about hacking on this one. She's just, she's using her module and she's playing the mini game on that little thing right there. It's almost like Minesweeper. You click through these little dots and you work your way across the mini game. And if you complete it, it unlocks the container. And if it unlocks the container, you get to loot the items out of it. Each one of those these, things. Are, yeah, these things here, you can't see the mouse, but the, the triangle thing and the square thing that's green, those can blow up the relic. All right. Down in the lower left-hand corner, there's, you got the life sign of um, no, 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 it this, blowing up. You don't, you, don't, you don't need to. This isn't about the hacking part of the game. They can't even see your screen. So they can't see my screen. They don't see the hacking piece. No, they're this. The live stream is on my screen. Oh, well, you guys don't yeah, see it from your so, end. No. So, so she's hacking and she's doing the mini game. We got videos on that, and we got a class on it that, like, a video that's pre-recorded if you need to watch that part. Um, but so she's hacking the container right now. She's trying to unlock it. This point right now. Come on we would be either waiting for her to finish to move to the second container. Okay, so she felled that one and it exploded. So right now she'll move on to the next container. Sometimes that'll happen. And usually when I'm PVPing and doing all this, I like to do what's called fattening the pig up. And I let them hack two or three containers and fill their cargo up with, you know, some loot so when i kill them i get some of that loot so i'll let them at least do like half of the site and then i warp in and attack them and kill them um i'm I, clearly i'm not going to warp in and attack and kill her but i'm using her as an example so we see how somebody moves around the site how you look at them so right now we've seen her move to the second um hacking container and she bounced off it right now so she's just sitting there right now we could click that container shows it on the overview and we could warp to it and uncloak my ship you don't see me actually hacking we can't see the hacking all we see is your ship in space well that's a different symbol i've never seen that symbol before it's so different in here there we go so even though I'm on the offensive side of things, like if she was the target and I was going to attack her, I would still want to be watching D scan to see if maybe this is a trap and maybe there's other ships off and waiting that I don't know about that are going to warp in right when I attack her. And it looks like she succeeded in hacking that container. She looted it. Huh. 
And right now we can see that she's moving off to the next container. Can you see me spinning my ship around or I'm just heading towards the... <laughs> So I'm going to warp away from her for a second, and then I'm going to set us up in a position so I can give you guys a demo on how you would attack somebody if you were attacking somebody. So if um, you were to destroy my pod, would I lose any of my skills? No, you would not lose any skills. It, destroying your pod would only destroy your implants and teleport you back to your home station. Okay, it's my implants that I lose. Okay. okay. I'd like to ask another question. Can yes. you somehow change your home station? Yes, you can. When you're docked at, say, our headquarters or another station, you can see the station name up in the upper left. It's yellow, I believe, or white. You'll be able to right-click on it, and there's going to be an option called set as home station. Okay, thanks. No problem. So right now, I warped away from her and back so I could get a farther position. Right now, I'm going to set a new bookmark, a temporary one. Okay, so now I want to warp away. I'm going to warp 100K to the sun, and then I'm going to warp 100K back from my bookmark, hoping that that gets me over 150K away from her. And this is the last minute approach. This is the way you can get that 150K distance, even though you didn't have time to set up before a target showed up. So I set my book cart mark 100 from her. Now I'm going to try to warp 100K from that bookmark. Dang. Left drive active. Hacking is so different in here. <laughs> Good experience for you. I've already got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hazards in this thing. Eight. Okay, so I made that mark and now I warped back 100K from my bookmark. So now I have an actual bookmark that sets me almost 200K from everything in that site. So let me delete the temps. I'm going to blow this one up, too. I'll name this like Perch. Now I can see Jackie in the site, and I can see everything here. I can see her on the overview, and I could warp to anything there. Watch when I click one of these now. Now I have the warp to option, almost like it was a gate that was super far away from me, but I can actually see it right there. So that means I can warp right to her if I wanted to. So now what I'm gonna do is go back, I'm gonna click on Jackie and I'm gonna do the eye thing to watch her again, to look at. You know, I'm missing out on this education you're giving. Uh, you're, you're learning at the same time in your own way. Yeah. I'll review the tape. So right now we're watching her. She's orbiting that. Sometimes that's a good method. Um, I usually recommend getting close, starting the hack, stopping your ship, and you can actually right click on your exit and do a line, an align to your exit. Well, that was a, an accident on my part. No, it's totally fine. Okay. So we're watching her right now. We don't want to. We don't want to jump in on her if she's already started the hack. We want to catch her on a fresh hack. 
so we know they're not going to finish the game and move away before we land. So right now, she's approaching the next container. Now, can you tell how many containers I get to, I have to hack? Yes, I can see that you've blown up, you blew up one, so that's no longer on the overview. And I can see two with empty circles, which means there's okay. four, four more containers to hack. So I right guess now three more. Oh, three more. Yes, yeah, sorry, I saw the sun and counted it. I can't count, sorry. Okay, so we can see that she's approaching this. We know it's this one. I can click on That right there could be my warp in point. We're going to give this one second to see if, because there could be somebody else in this hole. Let's see if somebody else might be watching us as, as well. Well, you get them if they are. Yeah. You're unknowingly bait. <laughs> oh, this is an easy one. Yay. And she finished that one. See, she hacked that one Ooh. fast. If I try to. Yep. I'm at six mil right now. So, and we can see she's heading to the next one. So right now I'm going to set up for and give you an example of how you would jump someone. Because I don't think anybody's watching. Nobody's in this wormhole, I don't think. If they are, they're cloaked and they just haven't decided to come out yet. So there's no way you can tell anybody's actually here until no. they uncloak. Yeah, if I wasn't, if you didn't know I was in here first, you would think you were alone right now. Overviews completely empty, locals completely empty, nobody's talking. You don't see any ships on D-Scan. It looks completely quiet. But you could also bump in the clo cloaked ones randomly and then cloak them, right? Yeah. See, there could be other people besides me that are cloaked in here. So right now we see she's on this one here. We're going to warp into her. We're going to tackle her. Hacking right now, so I'm not really paying attention. What the heck is this? This is a different symbol. Oh, really? It gave it to Oh, wow. Okay, so I clicked, I clicked on the container she was hacking, and I hit warp to zero. Now, as you watch me, when I land, I'm going to decloak. I'm going to have a slight targeting delay. I'm going to target her, warp scramble her, and web her. And so right now, Jackie is caught. Jackie cannot get away. She can't move. She can't warp. She can't do anything. She's stuck. But I see, I see him now. Yeah, because I've engaged you, and now you're, you're there. You're pretty much my prey. At this point, with this ship, I have energy drain. Now, now I see you in the screen. Watch your capacitor. It's gone. Oh, it's I got gone. one little blimp. Yeah, so even if I let off Warp Scramble and Web right now, she couldn't even warp away because she has no capacitor to do anything. I'm going to go ahead and let it off now. Will I get my capacitor back? It looks like it's coming back. Yes, you can have your capacitor back now. <laughs> but yeah, so... That right there is exactly how you do it. So I'm going to warp off and hit cloak right after I leave. I'm back on my perch, back watching. She can go back to what she's doing. 
but that exact method. So me clicking on her, clicking the eye, I can see where she's going. I can then click on that container that she's going to hack. And then I can right click and warp to it. And at that point, I can attack her. You always want to have a warp scrambler, or warp disruptor. Web helps because people freak out and they'll try to run from you. You don't want them to get away. One more. Okay, so I don't think we're going to catch an actual target in here. It seems pretty slow in this in this particular wormhole, but I'm glad we got her in. We were able to do a demo and show how you would catch somebody if a target did happen to pop up. Now, the Thank same you. Thing, it looks like normal space. It does for the most part, except when you start to look at the overview and you realize there's nothing to work to, no gates, nothing like that. So what yeah. I'll do is... I'll get, ha I'll get her into the other data site so she can hack that one as well. Now, I saw a video um, that says that things make your ship change while you're in a wormhole. The only thing I could think they meant by that is sometimes there's buffs, like bonuses. Sometimes you go into a wormhole and it'll be minus 50% to missile damage, but plus you know, 30% to, to um, ex like turret tracking speed or minus 20% to afterburner speed plus 10% to cap capacitor recharge. Like it'll be bonuses like that. When it has those, you'll see that above your, your shield and armor. There'll be like a little colored circle and it'll tell you what bonuses and buffs are, are in that wormhole. And it's pretty much like a global effect. No matter where you are in that wormhole, you're affected by those bonuses or negative effects. Yeah. Now, is this a level one site? There we go. Sorry, I was answering a question. Let me look. Because it seems so different hacking into this. Okay, I cleaned it out here. Oh, it disappeared. I believe it was a level one or a level two. Let me get you a warp in for the other side. Okay. Okay, I'm warping into their side. I'll tell you when I land, and then you can warp in. Okay. Still nobody on D-scan, so it's looking fairly relative safe in here. Okay, so... Let me know when so you can move out of the way. Okay, go ahead and warp to me. And this is a data site too, right? This one is a data. Yeah. There's quite, and also there's quite a few targets to in here, getting in here too, more than normal. Yes, it's really, really good money in here. Like, I don't know how much you made off that first site. Relics aren't as lucrative as data, but usually you make way more money in wormholes, but you always have that risk of getting blown up by players, which is why I recommended you bring the, the really cheap Tech One ship and not your nice Estero. Okay. But you could easily, like, that little Imicus of yours probably costs 3 million at most fit. Well, 
you could walk out of here with 30 million, 10 times the value of your ship if you survive. Seven right now. You made seven so far? Most of it is circuitry. Okay. It all sells. The corp does buy a lot of the, you know, all the salvage and stuff like that. The data sites give you better stuff, though. You get stuff for invention. You can get blueprints. There's a lot of cool stuff that comes out of data sites. Skill books. And mod, um, mo some modules. So again, when you click on, you know, a target, when you see them in the wormhole, you can hit the eye, look at them, point the, the camera in the way they're going, and you can see what they're hacking. Clicking on what they're hacking, and as long as you're over 150K, which I'm not yet, you can warp to them and then target them and attack them. Because you're cloaked and because you get to choose who you want to engage and who you don't want to engage, you could decide what you think is a trap, what's safe. You can, it's it's pretty much like a 100% guaranteed survival rate for you. Your cloaky ship is not going to get blown up unless you uncloaky and let it get blown up. So it's super safe. So as long as you look around, you're aware of the situation, nobody's talked in local, you see nothing on D-scan, the hole's been quiet, there's been no kills recently, and you're fairly sure that this Imicus is in here by itself. Attack them, get the kill, get the loot. Good job if you do it. Sometimes it can be a trap. Sometimes you can attack that Imicus and then eight ships can warp in on you and jump you. You never know what you're getting into. It's a complete dice roll inside wormholes. Like I said, there could be a hundred people cloaked. I could have uncloaked right now and been doing that demo with Jackie, and then five people could have killed us both. I never know. But that's the fun part of it, though. Like, Jackie right now is probably a little worried and stressed and anxious, and am I going to die? Am I going to die? I need to hurry up. Probably a little worried. But it eventually you get better at it, more used to it, more comfortable. And going into wormholes, into this kind of, like, PvP area, it gets more familiar to you and easier to do. It gets less stressful, and when you get good at it, you can get in and out and make a ton of money really fast. I'm not that worried because you're in here. <laughs> the PvP side of it, sometimes if it's, it's a waiting game. Sometimes you make this bookmark and you sit there and you wait. It's best to have a movie or a TV show or, you know, like binge watch on some TV shows or a book or maybe a phone game in front of you. And while you're waiting for somebody to show up in your, your wormhole in your site, do something else while you're watching the screen. Maybe get up, make a sandwich, you know, do a few things, some chores, throw the laundry and keep looking at your screen every once in a while. Eventually somebody will pop up and you'll catch and kill them. Uh, oh no, Jackie, you blew it up. I know that I'm, I had, I couldn't go anywhere in this thing. I, I hit two dots and I ended up with two, I don't know what you call them, virus. Yeah, they could be much tougher in the wormholes, but the pain's a lot better when you do succeed. It's a lot tougher. And there's unusual viruses in here that you don't see in a normal data site. Come on. It's like it, it's it taken a lot longer to do, which is makes you more 
susceptible of being ta attacked. Yes, exactly. See, I when I'm in here hunting people, I count on the fact that they're going to be all involved in that mini game. And they're going to be so involved in trying to get that loot and beat that mini game, they're not going to notice me as quickly when I uncloak and start targeting them. And usually they'll have that screen, you know, the hacking game right up in the front of them, looking at it, not watching their overview as, as much as they should, or not even watching D scan. So sometimes I uncloak, I have them targeted, warp scrambled, and web just like I did you within two or three seconds. Like it happens fast. By the time they realize I'm there, they already can't get away. They're done for. Sometimes I'll turn it into a fun pirate game. And I'll right click on them and I'll open conversation with them and be like, Arr, matey, you know, drop your cargo. And I'll tell them to jettison their cargo. And if they jettison their cargo and I get to loot all their cargo, sometimes I'll let them go and let them live. Or you can extort them. You could be like, give, give me 50 mil and I'll let you go. You know, and whether they deposit the money in your wallet or not, it's up to you if you want to actually let them go or, or kill them still or not. I usually honor it. If they if they pay and play along with my role playing, I'll let them live. <laughs> Terrible. It's fun. You you'll see. It's it's you could be so creative with this. I used to be part of a group called Wingspan, and all we did was go into wormholes, cloak like this, and we called it ammunition delivery. And we would deliver missiles or whatever to them and blow them up. But we had really funny mails that we would send them after. And the mail would be like, thank you so-and-so for your order of ballistic so-and-so missiles. We made sure that all our, our customers received their deliveries mm -hmm. on time and as ordered. We thank you again for your, your great order. And we, you know, we look forward to helping you again in the future. And we link their kill in the mail and everything like that. And... It, it's really funny, but we did it like customer service. And that when we killed you, we provided you a service, and that was ammo delivery. Oh, so I'm used to the whole role playing and all that in the game. It can be a lot of fun. You can take some interesting aspects, like towards when you're killing somebody or doing something, to make it fun for both of you. Like when somebody opens a conversation with you and starts talking like a pirate, tell me you're not going to laugh. <laughs> Well, this is working out good since there's nobody in here. Yeah, I expected it to be slow. It does happen to be. There's like, I don't know the exact number, but I believe there's like over a thousand wormholes in the game. So there's only so many people exploring wormholes with so many wormholes out there. Running into somebody can take five minutes. It can take two hours. You never really know how long it's going to take in here. Hey, hello. Hey, what's up, Flanks? Did all the basics, went in, you know, we recorded the video for people to go back and watch, but taught, you know, how to scan down a wormhole, how to find the data sites, how to make a perch inside the site where you're 150 km over. And we didn't get a target coming, so I had Jackie come in and start hacking some of the things in here. And then I warped to her and webbed and warp scrambled her, so I showed you know, basically how you catch somebody in a hole easily. And she's just finishing up hacking some of the sites right now. Who's So, Jackie, after that one, I am going to call the class since we pretty much went over everything yeah. um, while you're finishing that. And then I'll, I'll get you to the exit. Like, I'll warp to it and let you warp to me so you can get out of the, the hole since you didn't make bookmarks. Yes, thank you very much. But any questions from anyone about the ships used, the modules used, the tactics? about finding wormholes, about getting in and out, about bookmarks, D-scan, scanning itself. Any questions at all?
All right. Sounds like we're pretty covered then. You guys, we will save this. It will be in the Discord stream archives channel, along with some of our other streams that we've done in the past. You can always go back and watch it. It'll be hosted through YouTube. Um, and in chat, in game, or on Discord, if you do have any questions in the future, uh, just let me or somebody else know. We'll try to get you, you know, taken care of. Um, if you do ever want a stream done like this about a certain aspect of the game, just let us know. Um, see, Asana's just asked about this last night. And so I was like, hey, we'll do a stream tomorrow. So if there's anything you really want to learn about in the game, just ask me or let us know, and we'll do something like this for you. We'll put it on the calendar, get everybody in, and we'll go through the, the ropes, teach you the basics, how to do something. We can give you examples and do it ourselves. Anything from there's abyssals, the triglavians. You can open up portals and go fight them, to we've done planetary interaction ones. Um, we can teach you PvP. Uh, tomorrow, Wombat is doing one on fittings. He's going to go through all the ships from all the different races, all the different modules. He's going to show you how to fit ships, how to do armor tanking ships, speed tanking ships, uh, shield tanking ships, what not to do, like you don't fit double propulsions, you don't put armor tanking modules on shield tank ships, and vice versa. And you'll go through all that stuff, probably in about a one hour long class tomorrow. And that's about it then, guys. Um, I'm going to call it here and end the class. I hope um, I at least a few of you guys learned something. I think this class was useful. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Review it. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream. Um, have fun. Fly safe in game. I'll be AFK like 10 minutes, and then I'll be back. Now, this hacking is very time consuming. You know, I think there's uh, modules to the ship to, to like that increase the like the virus protection and stuff. Yes, I, I think you're right. I believe they're rigs too. I've never used them. But yeah, yeah, those quick six. Yeah, it's rigs. Yeah. Dang. Okay, Jackie, I'm warping to the exit now. You want me to leave? Um, or are you going to hang out there? Um, I can wait there for a minute if you want to hack that one container. I just blew it up. Okay, I, can, I, I can go. Yeah, okay. Let me know when you're ready. Okay, I'll let you know when I land. Give me one second. I'm sure you made a little bit of good money while you were in there. I made 10, 10, 5. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's fast money. Thanks for helping out and, and coming and popping in the wormhole to help me with the demo. You're welcome. Ooh. You want me to walk within 10 or zero? Go ahead and warp to me at zero. At zero. You ready? Okay. Yep. And then you'll see the, the wormhole in the overview. Just right click on it and jump through it. Okay. Normally, you'll want to have bookmarked it, you know, so you have your own warp in and warp out point like I showed in the video. But since I already did it, I just kind of sped up time and helped you get in and out by warping yeah. to me and all that. When you say bookmark, you're talking about saving it in people and places like we do for... Yes, exactly. Normal. Yeah. Go. 
Hopefully nobody's on the other side to get me. Oh, no, the other side is high sex, so you'd be completely fine. Oh, okay. Good. Cool. All right, I'll be back in like 10, 15 minutes. All right. Thanks for coming, guys.